We're in 2024, y'all. Some of y'all, you're here for the first time this year. We praise God for you. Um, Happy New Year to you. And I'm excited for all that the Lord has in store for us this year. Um, I'm really excited. And you'll learn more about, um, I'm going to be sharing more with you about the direction that the Lord is is taking us this year um, as a church, for those of you that are members of Thrive, but as well as for Prayer 365, for those of you that are members of this community. And so uh, more about that as we navigate forward. If it's your first time here, um, we do encourage you to join us in the lifestyle of prayer that we call Prayer 365. Um, We pray Monday through Friday at 6.30 a.m., And then on Saturday and Sunday, we also come together for prayer. I'll give you more information about that later in the week. But what have we discovered over these last four years? That prayer changes things. Not so much just simply things, but it changes me. It changes my life. It's changed my life and does so every single day. And if you've been looking for transformation in your life, you don't have to look any forward, any further. I believe that prayer is the answer. So let's go ahead and and get into our devotional for this morning. Let's get to it. Let's go. All right. So we're in a thing this week titled The Sifting Season, The Sifting Season season. I believe that this is so important as we're starting a new year uh, that we would that we would look at the life of Peter, Apostle Peter, and even a conversation that Jesus had with him. Well, Jesus gave him a heads up um, that there is a process that's ahead of you, um, one that's going to be facilitated uh, by by a person that you may not necessarily like. And in fact, it's an enemy. It's Satan himself um, that's going to facilitate this process. However, there's good news in the midst of this, and I want us to look at the text one more time. It's Luke chapter 22, verses 31 and 32 out of the King James Version. And here's what the Lord says to Simon, to Peter. He said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. He said, but I have prayed for thee. Oh, I thank God that he prays for us. Aren't you excited about that? Aren't you grateful for it? Yeah, he said, I've prayed for you. And he says that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. You see, brothers and sisters, in this particular text, what I've been pondering on over the last couple of weeks is is this whole sifting process. Um, It is a... It is a process that's common to wheat. Um, What it does is it's where the farmer will uh, separate what's useful, which is um, generally the kernel or the seed. He separates that from what's useless, and that's the chafe or shaft. And so um, the part that's useful or the seed, that's called the kernel. Okay, that's but that's actually concealed. Uh, by an outer shell and even surrounded by other parts that the farmer can't use. um, And that's called shaft. And so in order to separate the two, the wheat has to go through a process called sifting. Now, I find it so interesting that God would, um, that that, that Jesus, who is God, he would talk to Peter and say that Satan, uh, he desires to sift you like wheat. He didn't say that I'm going to stop it. He said, but what I have done and what I've done is I've, I've prayed for you that your faith doesn't fail through this process. You see, because Jesus knows and even Peter knows that sifting wheat is a violent process, but it's a necessary process in order to separate what's useful from that which is useless. And what I believe is is that Jesus is letting him know that in this process, there's going to be a separation in you, Peter. That within you, um, there's going to be a separation from the from that which is in you that's useful. And I'd even say that that's the Peter in him uh, from that which is useless. And that is the Simon in him. Oh, yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. His name was Simon, but Jesus then called him Peter. And what we discover is that in this whole process that he goes through, 
Yeah, Peter emerges and Simon fades away. Oh, isn't that good? Isn't that good? And what I want you to know is that I believe that God is doing something similar in your life. Um, he's allowed some challenges in 2023 uh, to create separation in your life. Perhaps you went through the year and went through some things not really understanding it. And what I desire to do is to give you some context to what you went through and even to give you some encouragement as you are going into this new year of 2024. All right. You ready for it? Well, here's what I want you to know as it relates to us. That sifting, it reveals the parts of you that are in conflict with your calling. Sifting reveals the parts of you that are in conflict with your calling. For Peter, there were four things that were in conflict with his calling. His pride, um, which was his self-confidence, his presumption, uh -huh, and even his power and his desire to protect himself. Yeah, these are four things that were in conflict with Peter's calling. And what sifting does, it reveals the parts of you that are in conflict with the call of God that's on your life. And I believe that God uses conflict even through the sifting to reveal the things that are in conflict with our calling. And so what I want to do is I want to show you that and what you went through uh, there should have been a revelation at some point as to what are the things, um, what are the habits, what are the thoughts, what are the ideas, um, what are those things that were in conflict with your calling? Because God was using that conflict to separate it. Number one, number one, um, there, there are four things, four things as we look at Peter that can be in conflict with your calling. Number one is your pride, your pride, your pride, your pride will be in complete conflict with your calling. We talked about this on Sunday night when we were walking through, uh, walking through this in our New Year's Eve service, and I wanted to walk back through it again. So if you, if it feels that I'm repeating myself, um, just ride along with me because we need to make sure that we have this in our hearts, this word, so that we can make sure that we're applying it in our lives. Okay. So uh, pride is the priority of self above all else. Pride is when you consider you, when you think about you above everything else. And what we find in Peter is that when he was sifted and even before the sifting, it was already apparent that Peter had a pride issue. Yeah. Uh, Peter was more concerned with his with his desires more so than God's. Um, however, uh, that don't mean that God needed to throw him away. He just knew that Peter needed to go through a sifting season. And so Peter went through the sifting season and pride showed up. And what, what I want you to know about pride is that um, sometimes pride will hide itself in us, um, but it always leaves behind evidence. It always leaves behind proof that it was present and it's called destruction. Yeah, I always know that pride is in my life when destruction uh, start showing up in other areas. What do you mean by that, Brother Brooks? Well, Scripture says in Proverbs that pride goes before destruction. Yeah. So that means uh, if I if I start seeing a pattern of destruction in my relationships, if I start seeing a pattern of destruction in the work that I do um, in my life in other areas, well, that lets me know that's a red flag. Uh, pride must be present because pride always leaves behind destruction. And I want to encourage you brothers and sisters, that um, when you were, uh, and even if you're going through something right now, you're in a sifting season at this moment, I want you to recognize if pride was there. Don't carry pride into this year because it is in direct conflict with the call of God that's on your life and you will not be fruitful. You will not be productive as long as you carry pride in your life life. This is a sifting season. And the sifting that you've gone through, uh, the Lord used it to separate that which is useful from what is useless. And pride is right along with that shaft. It's completely useless. You cannot use it in the call of God that's on your life. Well, I want to pray with you this morning because I believe that the Lord is giving us a wonderful opportunity to look at our situation with a different perspective. 
perhaps I thought I was just going through when in fact I was growing through and God was using that season to separate that which is useful from that which is useless. And we know today that pride is completely useless in my life. Let's pray that the Lord would lead us in keeping pride from our hearts. Father, we honor you today and we bless your name. You're faithful, you're holy, you're righteous. You are our King. And Lord, I ask you to forgive us of our sin. Father, cleanse us. Make us right in your presence. Purge us with his of today. And we thank you that you're faithful and just to do that very thing. Lord, this is the day that you've made. We make the decision to rejoice and be glad in it. And Father, as we navigate through this season, even what we're calling a sifting season, Father, help us to examine our lives to be able to find where there was pride. Lord, pride is not going to help us be productive because pride has a priority of self above all else. And Lord, that is not a part of the character of your kingdom. It's not a value in your kingdom. You value love, loving thy neighbor as thyself. And so, Lord, we surrender to the process. And Lord, we ask that you would teach us how to continue to sift our hearts. Show us the areas in our relationships. Show us the areas in our work. Show us the areas in our habits where we have allowed pride to, to contaminate our lives. Lord, we are serious about our calling. And we know that if you called us, God, you're going to keep us. And I'm so glad that you prayed for us that through the process, our faith would not fail. I pray that same prayer for my brothers and sisters that as they, as they go through, that their faith won't fail. But Lord, they would embrace the sifting season. And Father, as we close out this prayer, we pray the way that your son taught us and we say, our Father who's in heaven, holy is your name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And all of God's children say, Amen. Well, God bless you. My name is Enrique Brooks. I'm honored to be the senior pastor of Thrive Church and host of the Prayer 365 podcast. Well, we're on a mission to transform lives through the lifestyle of prayer. I encourage you to take 60 seconds to reflect on today's devotional and ask the Lord to show you where pride has contaminated your life and become in conflict with your calling so that you can completely separate yourself from that idea in your life. God bless you.